Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hi, I'm Melissa Matthews and I'm here today with Alison of Let Love Bloom and we're going to be talking about abundance and how to tap into an unlimited mindset, which is a very interesting topic and that's why we've, we've decided to talk about it again. Hello, Alison. Hi, Melissa. Lovely to see you again. Again. It's a great topic. It's just um, that we've chosen to talk about today. I know that it has so many different facets to it and probably opinions as well so that's why we thought we'd make it a really good topic to talk about today and discuss what's worked for you and what's worked for me what doesn't work what doesn't what work. people say works but doesn't work i know and what i can just see is never gonna work it's like <laughs> Okay. It is such so, a hot topic, isn't it? Like It's a hot topic. And and you know what? Abundance too, people are looking at it as a monetary point of view, as in receiving monetary. And I can tell you right now, I know, I know people with a lot of wealth. I know people that are just, you know, everyday people. You know, they have their mortgage, they live in the suburbs. And, and I, you know, and I know it's really hard for people to understand that it's not actually how much you've got it's the appreciation that you have for what you already have yeah because if you're aiming if your goal is to be a millionaire and to really um you know make that money and get that i can tell you right now how many people i know they go past that they make it and they've forgotten to enjoy it they've forgotten what their original goal was because actually their focus was on making the money it wasn't about their everyday life and this is where the struggles come in and they feel cheated you know, they so really that's a that's, that's a good question. So, mm. can you have wealth, money, abundance, as well as you know, healthy other aspects of your life, or is it like no? I happy? I know people that are extremely happy, and it doesn't matter to them what they've got or what they haven't got. They're not looking at that. They're looking at their quality of life. They're looking at what they have and they make use of what they have. And they don't, they're not comparing themselves to others as well. They're actually calm and focused on their family. They might go to, you know, they might have their connections in within the community and that, but there isn't this thing I've got to, got to, got to have. Yeah. And, and so it actually is um, what we, you know, it's, it's being kind to yourself. This is the first and most primary thing of all is actually what is in here and what am I satisfied with? And yeah. so, you know, that to me is what abundance is about. It's not the focus on the money. That is a byproduct of happiness and of focus and of planning and of doing things from a calm state. But what do you think? About or am I just talking through the head, my head? <laughs> well, that's what we're here to, to, to chat about. So I guess people have, you know, there's, People have their own different ideas of what abundance means to them. Um, abundance to me means that. Um, so let's let's just break it down. So to to be abundant, I I have had to make it uh, a more of a conscious effort over the years of my healing journey to actually make it a priority every day to focus my mindset, focus my thoughts onto a, what I'm already grateful and I have an abundance of in my life. And there's been times in the past where, you know, I've been very stressed about money, for example, and a lack of abundance there. But what spirit has taught me and what I've learned over the years is to, in those times of real worry is to just bring it, take it general and to think about the abundance of other things in my life. And that helps my energy field. So uh, the, I go down to the beach. I look at the abundance of nature, the abundance of beautiful, fresh air. I can just breathe in and out in that moment, the abundance of water available to me at any time to hydrate my body, the abundance of food that 
we are so blessed to have in this country. And I bring it back down to the most general, general thing. And what I've learned over the years is that actually then all of a sudden will affect my other areas of abundance. It's like, what on earth? I was just sitting down the beach. <laughs> it opens up the floodgates. Yeah. And, the, you know, amazing things just started to like show up or, you know, phone calls and stuff like that. So that has blown my mind over the last <laughs> years. Like, how does that even happen? I thought, you know, I come from, you know, my husband works, he's worked 60, 70 hours a week, you know, works really hard. And that's worked for him. He succeeds in that. And I see so many other people that that works for, but yeah. it doesn't work for me. <laughs> it no. like shuts no. all my abundance down when I focus on that. So do you, what do you, when you, when you have people come to see you say, what's what's the main things that's coming up like what generally would come up either for you or for them what do you feel okay so generally there's three things that i that are very very important to look at when you're when clients come to me i look at their energy and vibration and what their emotional frequency score is radiating at the majority of the time if you're stressed worried anxious a lot of the time on the go, then your energy field is going to actually be very low. Closed, closed tired, low. It's, and so, you're not exactly. vibing. You're not you're vibing. Not. And bad. you need to actually be, your energy and vibration and um, energy field needs to be at the energy frequency of joy, love, happiness, peace, and above that. So technically on the scale all the lower vibrations of anger resentment worry fear depression are all 500 and below love joy and um enlightenment is 500 and above so is. you to actually tap into your ability to manifest and connect to the super consciousness and that high vibing stuff you've got to make it a priority every day to do what lights you up, what brings you joy, be, you know, proactive in your energy and vibration. So that's number one. And then also getting into the receptive mode. We are so many clients I see feel so selfish and guilty for receiving anything, even a compliment, even they'll a friend. Hide it. <laughs> they'll throw it back. They'll say, no, no, no. I'm sucking it up like a Dyson on steroids. Now I, I used to knock those compliments back. Absolutely, you know? me too. And and it's valid. Like we give compliments to people for that reason because it, it's true and it makes them feel good and you can see the energy change. And so, you know, but, but to receive that compliment, that's very different. So yeah. when I realised how much my martyr attitude was <laughs> no. really affecting my ability to manifest all the things that I had been trying to manifest, it was like a light bulb moment. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, it's like the universe is trying to give you all these really beautiful things via people in your life helping you out. And all you do is like, no, no, it's okay. No, no, no. So in the end, people stop giving or stop asking or, you know. Well, yeah, they just expect that you're not going to, to, to want it, to take it. They stop inviting you places. You know, that, or they only ask you to, you know, to do things because they know that you'll you'll do them. So you know, that's that whole thing. Like, oh, I'll only do, I won't receive. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. it's really an important spiritual concept and law, isn't it? That balance it of giving and receiving. Yeah. I've taken years and years and years to really let myself practice that and receive and just say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I often do that all throughout the day. I just say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. And it instantly just puts my energy into the receptive mode. It does. Yeah. And things and just show up. And that's, uh, I think that that's quite normal. So sometimes um, if we think about our own personalities, I would say that I was like um, the advocate for everybody, the fixer, the doer, the warrior, and not warrior. Warrior. <laughs> yeah, W-O-R-R-I-E-R. -R -E and, you know, I used to worry about everyone. I was quite anxious. And that is, um, 
and that's not a calm state. That's not a good state to be in, you know, and it leads to other things, you know, within the body, you know, um, upset and, and, you know, anxiety and things like that. So when you, you start to slowly open this, this energy channel, as we would, you know, as we can call it, or this feeling of actually, yes, I will have that. I would like that. Thank you. I appreciate you doing that for me and allow people to do things for you as you're doing for them. It just, it changes your energy and that gratitude as well that you talked about, you know, and being, being not like, oh, I should be thankful about this, you know, because that's what it says, but it's more like, you know what, that's really nice. I like that. That's really kind. And it just, you start to feel it change within the body and that starts to open it up as well. That, you, you feel that energetic shift and you get better and better at it. Like you say, I mean, Alison, you're pretty disciplined. You, you practice all this stuff every day. I'm a bit, you know. Because I've had to. Had I'm to. like, <laughs> if I want to be the mum that I want to be, if I want to actually, you know, enjoy my life, you know, I've had to like work on so much of this programming of feeling guilty about having every, anything. Like this is something yeah. that comes up with my clients all the time. I say to them because they're such empaths or people pleasers or they feel guilty, I say to them, imagine if you were really healthy, happy, thriving in life in a healthy relationship with just a beautiful life and your mum, dad, siblings, friends weren't, how uncomfortable does that make you feel? And so many people it's like, oh, yeah, I'd feel so uncomfortable and guilty if I was doing really well and people around me weren't. So it breeds these codependent relationship and unconscious patterns. It's like having one foot on the handbrake and one on the accelerator all the time. And when people get that, it's like, oh, my goodness, they can consciously start to change. Yeah. And th- there's nothing wrong with doing well. There's nothing wrong with feeling good. Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. But people and might hate right. me. People might be jealous of me. That's you know, right. this is the real stuff us little empaths often yeah. feel. Yeah. That people are going to be jealous of us or talk bad about us or not like us. And another thing, you know, another thing that's come up recently is, you know, um, about being humble. And to me, you know, when I when I hear that, I'm like, what does that mean? What does being humble mean? You know, because this is also within that mindset as well. You know, now you're talking about like the dynamics and that being humble to me. And, um, you know, there's, there's positives and negatives to everything, of course. But for me, humble can mean being, don't go any higher than this because you know what, I'm, I'm up here and you're not. So there are reasons why we, and we're, we're trained, you know, to be kept you know, to be kept at a certain level so that we can't actually go up within yeah. our professions and our careers and our lives. And so, you know, and that also is about happiness and, and health and and doing things and wanting, you know, wanting to travel. But, you know, we, um, you've got to stay humble. You can't show off that you've done this. You can't show off that you've earned this. You, you're you a show off, you know. And so this whole thing. Yeah, of- you don't want to be arrogant or egotistical, no, no, you no. know, even with the self-love thing, you know, people... Yeah really struggle to love themselves because yeah. they think that would be arrogant or, you know, egotistic. I, I just say, look, I'm fabulous because I am. Because <laughs> it makes me feel better and it's got like a nice humour about it. But it also means that the person that I'm with, it's also an acknowledgement that they are fabulous as well because everybody is. Everybody yeah. is. So, you know, so that um, that whole thing about, you know, being humbled, you know, I've really struggled with that over the years because, you know, and and it's really... I would say um, I don't need to tell people about my circumstances or anything like that, but I certainly, I certainly am proud of my achievements. And so am I being humble or am I hiding? Wow. Well, that was something, you know, I don't want to say, Alison. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) You know, so these are, these are things, you know, which, which, you know, can come in. We're raised to be modest and humble. We're raised to be modest. When we're raised to be quiet, we're raised to be seen and not heard. And that's not in all families for sure. But, you know, but there, but this comes into mindset as well, particularly about abundance. And it's all subconscious mindset programs yeah. that we're talking about here because so many times our conscious mind's like, oh, yeah, no, I'd love to have that. I'd love to have that. But deep down, if you ask your subconscious, it's, there's, that's where the beliefs are that, 
has really been important yeah. to clear yeah. and dissolve and work on yeah. um, to really change things. Well, one of the best pieces of advice that, that oh, I don't even know where I, I got it from in all honesty, but it was know your worth. And that is about not about your financial worth and about how much an hour you can get paid and all of this sort of business. It's actually about knowing your worth. What's your gold? What's, what are your strengths? Because you know what? We all have our strengths. And I know myself that I used to hide those because I didn't want people to feel um, overwhelmed because I had this particular knowledge or this particular skill set. Um, did you dull yourself down? I did. I had to because I was pretty loud. <laughs> but I, you know, but I was, you know, I... I have learned yeah. to not speak about certain things and to not do. Why is that things. though? So, did, were you afraid that people, you know, of people's reactions? Is, is that why? I was really quite shy, and yeah, and people's reactions and things like that as well. And you know, like it was just, I was pretty smart, but in a lot of ways, like in um, I suppose emotional intelligence, I wasn't yeah. very smart at all. I had to learn that, so I graduated at at 33 on the emotion. No. <laughs> Emotional intelligence is an ongoing thing. But, um, but you know, there were things and, and I didn't understand like how, you know, how life worked and how relationships work. So, you know, there were certain things where I knew that I needed to be, to be quiet about it. Like, so there were times when it was good to be what we call humble or a little quiet and to listen. And there were times when it needed, things needed to be shared or said or done. And so I've learned to balance that now, but only, you know, in my late 20s <laughs> as I am now. <laughs> yeah, so, it, you know, it's just something that we all go through. Everybody goes through it. Nobody is immune to this. Like we, you know, we do have, um, you know, this personal work to do about our place in the world and knowing our worth and understanding our worth and appreciating our worth because then we can see it quite clearly in others. Yeah, absolutely. The more I love, I love the the mantra and the affirmation that I, you know, I use all the time now is to help me. The more I love and value myself, the more I will attract others who love and value me too. That's that right. keeps me right dead center, feeling that this is the best thing for me to do because I don't want to attract any more people, jobs you know, relationships, people who don't really love me and value me. So the more we can love and value ourselves, yeah. the more our vibration then will go out to attract the people who are capable yeah. of giving to us without the strings attached. And I think, you know, that's such a huge thing about abundance as well, like receiving so many things. We feel like it comes with strings attached or things like well, so many times it does. Let's be honest, because, you know, a, a gift is not always a gift. A gift is to be given as in with no strings attached, no expectation. But well, this is, this is me. <laughs> you know, there's always like an ulterior motive. And so I, yeah. and I, that can be really tricky. Yeah, it can be really tricky. If you give your, so say um, if it's, um, you know, say your, it's your child's birthday and you give them money and you say that it's for this, but then they go and spend it with that. You know what? I just give it and whatever they do with it, that is it. If I can't give it in a way that just lets them do it, to me, it's not a gift. It's not a gift. It's, some, it's money with an expectation that they'll do this. It's not so a how do you cope then? Like I was, I'm just wanting interested to ask, how have you dealt with things? If someone was to give you something or, but then, you know, held you to ransom or they came with strings, how would you maybe deal with that for your own peace of mind or something? So as I'm older now, I don't, older and wiser. <laughs> I'm a little older and a little wiser. So, I would, so I'll start by saying that now that I'm an older person and now that I'm, a, now that I do my meditation and have that calm time, because that helps me to make better decisions. Mm, good point. Every day. And I don't make decisions based on what people call intuition, like on the spot. I don't do that. I go away out of that energy or, or out of that dynamic. And I just go away and I just say, you know what, I'm going to come back to you on that. And I'm not going to make any promises. I want to go away and I want to have a think about whether or not this is the right thing. 
And so I'll go back and I'll and I'll think about it. And I might do some meditation or whatever, but I but I base it on what is right for me rather than what is right for them. Now, 30 years ago, that wasn't the case at all because you know what? I, <laughs> I was just like, oh, that's so wonderful. And I was making decisions that were not in my best interests, they were in the other person's best interests. And when I think now, when I think back on um, the way in which it was so easy to manipulate a person like me who yeah. is young, yeah. I just think, you know what, those people should have known better. But that's, it's human nature, it's humanness, you know, that's the way that it goes. Funnily enough, those people, and this is like what happens when you, you know, you no longer attract that type of person, um, they wouldn't even look at you in the street now because it's different. Yeah. Your energy and vibration are completely on a different It's completely wavelength. different. It's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It just means that it's you just know what? It's what just it, is. How it is. Yeah, it's just how it is. So, And I also, like, I realise, as you know, that I play a part in everything that I do. And so with, you know, with gifts and things like that that are given and with that understanding, I know that it does come back to me and I play a part in it. So I have to take responsibility for that gift as well, no matter what it is and understand. So I'm pretty good now at not getting myself into sticky situations <laughs> where I'm required to do something, you know, that's just, to me, that's just buy, like a sale, <laughs> you know, do it. Well, I think it's, it's totally what you're saying. It's part of our, you know, spiritual awakening and our soul's journey is that we are becoming more and more aware of our higher self ever since the, the earth energy has, you know, ascended humans yeah. now have so much more, awareness to yeah. our higher self to the higher beings and that's why you know i will you know kinesiology is great because it's always tapping into my you know a client's inner wisdom higher self in a guidance system for the answers but i t you know teach my clients you can learn how to do this yourself specifically if you're just you know say to yourself if you've got a decision to make i always just ground myself teach them to just ground myself and just tune in and say what is for my highest good yeah because it might look all good on paper yeah but how many times have you kind of with your you know making decisions things look good on paper and it's all like a, something looks really good <laughs> all right there's something telling you it doesn't feel right yeah so what do you do then i don't you trust your gut do you trust <laughs> right. your intuition yeah. or do you just like push the snooze button on it and just, oh, no, it should be fine. It looks all good no. on paper. Can't do that now. Like that to me, it, it can't be done now. Now I realise that I have to, for me, I have to take that responsibility and I have to own, own those decisions. And the reason that I also do own those decisions, you know, and if it, if it turns like and if it just, you know, falls like a, you know, like a cracked egg or something like that, and it just goes to, to the pan, you know, that's, and it's just no good. You know what? I've made that decision. That's it. But in saying that, because I, I take responsibility for those, my decisions and my actions now, I also have the same thing when I do something really good and which I'm really proud of. I know, and I take ownership of that. And so that's the thing. When you take responsibility for your decisions, for your actions, you know, you, you, you take them in all arenas the good and the bad. And you know what? And you just learn about it. I don't, I don't tell anyone about any possible alleged mistakes that I might make. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> no, but how much do you now give yourself permission to like give yourself a pat on the back and be your own cheer squad? When it comes to tapping into the abundance mindset, like I've really had to learn to actually be my own little cheer squad and, you know, allow myself to yeah. be proud of myself. Yeah. You know, it all taps into that worthiness stuff again. Like yeah. I've, I've had to learn to constantly give myself those pep talks, be my own cheer squad. And, you know, because let's face it, not many people do it. <laughs> well, that, well, that's right. I mean, we're, we're, well, I'm my, I'm the biggest critic. We are. Yep. Like I don't need anyone else telling me that I'm doing the wrong thing or that I've done the wrong thing, you know? So um, but yeah, I, I'm the one that looks at my decisions. I'm the one that says, you know what, that's really good. That's, that's pretty good. And you know what, if I am thinking, gosh, that was crap or whatever, you know what, I go and have a sleep. 
I'll go and have something to eat. I'll go and meditate or I'll go out and I'll go away. Because sometimes that is just, yeah. it is just like that monkey mind, you know. So really that's a good point, you Go know, looking yourself. at your inner critic, looking yeah. at how much your inner critic, your negative yeah. Nancy that's always putting you down is again making your energetic vibration just so low all the time. Yeah. You've got to just stop. You've got to stop it. it. You've got to and realize it and it can take um, a little bit of time once you really start to understand like when you're having a go at yourself or you're being negative about yourself to yourself in your mind you've really got to stop that and it takes a little bit of time before you you know to get yourself out of that habit but it does you, you can get yourself out of that habit and it can drop back from you know being at 90 percent having a go at yourself and you know even if we call it self-deprecating humor or whatever it doesn't matter it's a negative connotation so you know you can flip that slowly so that then it's only happening 10 percent of the time and you you just become more aware of it but you you do become more aware of like looking after yourself and understanding how important sleep hydration good food and yeah. surrounding yourself with yeah. other friends and people who don't put themselves down all the time. Or yeah. That's right. And so, you know, and there's humour and, um, you know, and, and kindness, like, and not like all flowery stuff, so, you know, but, but just like niceness, you know, and, and that's what we need more of in the world. So that's, to me, that's the mindset. It comes from within. It comes yeah. from looking after yourself. It comes from being aware, as you say, of the scale, the, the Hertz scale. That's really important. Are you going to put that on um, a link for that on your blog? You know that scale that you were talking about? Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. I've actually got the emotion on my, on my this week's blog on my letlovebloom.com.au. I did a blog and it's got a picture of the um, emotional scale. frequency scale. Yeah. You can look up the emotion that you're feeling at the moment and look at it's only like a 100 or 150. Yeah. And so you're never going to be manifesting. No. So to open up that energy field and to make you feel good, not only about what you already have and what you can do, you know, and, and make, you, make yourself feel better, that, that's a great guide to go by, you know. So looking after yourself, looking at the guide, understanding like who you are, understanding your good points, knowing your worth and having that confidence in yourself that if someone says something to you, you're not rattled by it. You know your worth. You don't listen to it. You no longer entertain that sort of rubbish comment. That's a really key factor as well because, you know, yeah. it can happen anywhere and someone can just be having a bad day and you can take it to heart and suddenly, you know. And you, you can get triggered. Oh. It's, it, it's right you know we can't help but not being triggered sometimes but it's how we return to a state of love or how we process yeah. that and return to you yeah. know a good place that's yeah. really important and let's be clear about those comments sometimes people are just really drips like they're just a drip and they just go out of their hurt way people <laughs> hurt people you that's know right. A lot of the time people aren't happy with themselves, so they'll take cheap shots at you. Yeah, just let it go. Just let it go. So as Brene Brown says, you know, you've got to be in the arena to comment on what I do. So, so there you go. So have you got anything else to add in there? I would all, I've got two little things. Yeah. When it comes to anything that you want to have more of in your life, whether it's better health, better relationships, better, you know, more money. Um, you've got to love it. You've got to absolutely love it. I spent so much time feeling guilty about loving money or needing or wanting money, the greed, the shame that's all attached to it. And literally when you realize that, it keeps it out of your energy field. You can never have much of it if no. you don't love it. And so you've got to really rise above all that mental, emotional um, programming and just really start to look at things from a higher perspective of anything that you're not comfortable with or happy to hold have close to you and I sometimes practice whatever's in my hand I just imagine whatever it is I'd love to manifest you know holding it out in there front of me <laughs> putting some magic into it of course raising energy and then bring it into my heart and if it doesn't go in easily or if my body doesn't receive that 
easily if I've got uncomfortability with it I just know that I've got more work to do to keep soothing and soothing yeah. my comfortability with that and do you do you do some writing then just to have a look at that just to see what it is or just a bit of meditation a bit of quiet time just Definitely. to look at that and see where the mind takes oh the, which know? reminds me of my other my other little point is when <sighs> journaling journaling is you know <laughs> what is you know we've both been doing for so long and it's amazing what comes through but it's the for me and this could be controversial for some people it's our unconscious vows and commitments that we could have made a long time ago not just this lifetime but past lifetimes of unconscious vows and commitments to not needing anyone or anything being happy with the bare minimum yeah. You know, lack and scarcity, yeah. those ones, if you resonate, if you've ever realised that you've said these things to yourself <laughs> at some time, especially after you've been hurt by someone or really hurt, you've gone, well, that's it. I, I don't, don't need, need anyone anything. or anything. I'm going to be self-sufficient. I can do it myself. Do it myself. Yeah. Guess what? You're cutting yourself off from every good person that can help you and source energy when you yeah. make you don't realize yeah, how powerful that statement is. It's done in anger and it pulls this energy in. And it's, it, it, it's actually, it, 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 to me at times, it's like a shell. It's like nothing can get in. Nothing, That's it. I can't be hurt. I'm so protected. Like my auric field is, like you can see it sometimes. Like I'm so protected that nothing can get in to hurt me. Well, Absolutely. that means nothing. That means nothing. And so it, it's very, very limited and for, you know, and I've done that myself, you know, I, I've realised that about myself as well. Like I've cut that because I didn't want anything to come in. That's how I said it. Whereas, you know, like bringing in that source energy, like down and through, you know, everything and just being calm, like that opens it back up again, taking it from a state of anger and, and hate at times, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, even gossip and things like that as well. You know, it does a certain thing to the to the body, the energy field, and so you know that's why sitting calmly and being and looking for good things or or just you know getting yourself out of that, it actually helps you. It doesn't your auric field. I must say this: your auric field is not compromised when you do this. You know, when you when you allow the love in of source, when you um when you allow it that its energy fields to be cleared, it is not compromising your auric field. You can put a golden bubble around that as well. Understand that you have that, you have that option. But I just remember, you know, starting to do this, it was so painful. And I really, you know, it's because I was, it felt like I was betraying myself. So if you really feel like receiving things or letting people into your life or good things is so uncomfortable for you, it's because of this old promise that you made to yourself. Mm. So starting to do this can make you feel like I'm betraying myself. So it's really important that that happens that, you know, and me and Melissa can help you with clearing those yeah. vows as well in our sessions and just making that whole process integrate better. Yeah. So, okay. So are we going to wrap this up now? Sure. Our Have little... you got anything else you want to share? No, I, th- I think that I've actually got it, but you know, abundance, it comes from within. It comes from a, a sense of confidence within yourself and, and within your knowing that you are good and that you're good at what you do. And then everything else radiates out from there. And yes, you know, if you want to earn the money, you know, because for some people that is important because they do things with their money and they want things and it's okay. That's right. But the sense of balance and happiness and joy through family and connection, not only with your community and with yourself, is very, very important. And that... that you give generously. You, you give That's generously right. through your kindness. You don't have to give through money. You can give generously through kindness, through a smile, through, you know, however you feel comfortable with giving. And it does come back. You know, it's it's like people when they move into a new community and they find a great group of people and they feel really relaxed. It's like that. It it's it's this welcome, it just is a great feeling to have. You know, so that's all that I can say. But you know, but if um 
we could so, probably do another show like this. There's so much we could, we could talk about. We could. And we do welcome your questions. If you have any questions, you know, um, that you would like us to talk about, um, then please do that. And um, But otherwise, you can find more about me on my website, including the links to social media on melissamatthews.com.au and Alison. My same. website, yeah, letlovebloom.com.au. All the links, social media, everything's on there. So check it and out. Alison does her readings and kinesiology both on the Central Coast. On the Central Coast, in clinic. Or by Skype and phone. And phone. And I do the same. So I do readings and also spiritual development as well. But you can check those out on the website. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank Bye, you, Melissa. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes. 